we've got, I think, a pretty interesting interview coming up with uh, Terrell Jermaine Starr. He's a senior reporter with The Root, specifically right now covering the 2020 primary. And he recently covered the National Action Network. That is um, Al Sharpton's organization, and there was a convention. And I think this year, it was pretty important, a lot of topics going on, a lot of presidential candidates there, to pitch to black voters. So we're going to welcome Terrell Jermaine Starr. Good morning, Terrell. It's good afternoon where you are, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Good morning to you out there. So first off, can we talk about the importance of the NAND convention? Because in your opinion, I want to know, because I saw last year, actually, this was when I first even knew about the convention. You wrote an article and said that it, let me get it right, it was arriving just as civil rights progress is taking its biggest hit in decades. So what's the importance of the convention to you? The importance? Namely, well, sure, namely, when candidates go to NAND, it is one of the few opportunities where uh, presidential candidates or political up-and-comers have an opportunity to uh, speak directly to black voters. It's, it's a way to build cachet. It's, it's kind of uh, Reverend Al Sharpton's way of, of, the, of, of giving people the space to say, well, yeah, you're, you are somebody who can legitimately earn our vote or not. That's the reason why everyone goes. And this, this year, there were up to 12 candidates, and this is the most diverse pool, the Democratic pool that we've ever seen. And so it's more important now than it was in previous years because of all the stakes that are involved. In 2018, you had the rise of black women uh, going to conference, not only black women, but other women of color, but the focus on black women. And so now people feel a bit more emboldened by um, asking candidates what they want and really pushing the conversation, namely around reparations, in order to certify whether or not someone is really BSing them or not. And so that was a question that Reverend Sharpton asked everyone. People don't believe that realistically it'll happen in the past three years or four years, but they want to know where their minds are to really gauge if they really are really about that life for black people. So who was there this year? Because I think there's importance in that. Who was willing to show up? As far all, as candidates. Of, all of the major candidates. So Kirsten Gillibrand, you had Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, uh, Kamala Harris. You had potential candidates, uh, including um, Stacey Abrams. And you also had uh, uh, Mayor Pete from South Bend. You had Julian Castro. So pretty much all of the major people who stand a chance of winning were there. Most of them appeared on Friday afternoon and Friday morning, and I had an opportunity to interview some of them throughout the week. Uh, also, let's not forget Cory Booker. I also interviewed him uh, as well. I know there's a big piece on The Root. Hopefully, we'll have time to get to that. I want to know, back to the convention, also just really quickly, any highlights? Because this was an opportunity for all of these candidates to kind of make their pitch to black voters. So any highlights as far as what they were saying for you? Well, uh, for me... Not necessarily. It wasn't so much of a, anything, anyone saying anything spectacular uh, beyond what we expect black people to hear in the obvious. Donald Trump is a racist okay. and pushing back against the GOP racism. Like that part was obviously clear. I think what was happening uh, this year and what you notice within the crowd is people still are making up their minds on who they can ultimately trust simply because there are so many people, right? And so. I think this year, what we saw was it had as much to do with how seriously the candidates are taking black votes as as it did with people respecting um, the Reverend Arnold Sharpton. Because keep in mind, all these candidates, the next time that they're going to get together is going to be doing a debate in June. And then there's in, in Miami, then you have the other uh, presidential debates that are taking place in Detroit in July. So... For all of these people to come together for this conference, really, in fact, they came together and the schedule was uh, chronically late, but people still stayed. Uh, it showed how important it was, um, how important the, the organization NAN is, and why people and, and why people trust NAN as a place to really test their bona fides uh, with black voters. It was like a sample test of what's to come for Super Tuesday in the rest of the primary. So Terrell, I have a question about reparations. So what, how are those candidates that you mentioned handling that issue and who handled it best and what made it a good way of handling the, the issue? 
That's an excellent question because let's face it, most people don't really understand the nuances and the depth and breadth of what the reparations are. Frankly, most people think that it's all about getting a check. And we all know that that's not true at all. It has everything to do with redlining. There's political elements to it that don't have anything to do with reparations, but they contextualize um, the discrimination and the marginalization of black people throughout the decades and the centuries. And so we, I think as, as to who answered the question best, um, you know, in my interview with Stacey Abrams, uh, I felt like she was, and you'll see that interview Monday, um, she basically said that I am in support of reparations for black people, but there needs to be a uh, a committee of people who are able to decide how that is best going to be carried out uh, because I don't know all the answers. And, and she was really, I thought it was really honest for her to say, I don't know all the answers. Uh, another, uh, and then the other people uh, pretty much spoke the same tune. Julian Castro in his interview with us, um, we actually broke that news. He was actually one of the first person to uh, open, uh, to be open to reparation, what it looks like. So Julian Castro, even though he's not scaling as high in the polls as other candidates, he's the one from the very beginning that's been very explicit about it. The only person who really did not explicitly in detail come out in support of it, what, uh, uh, state her opinion more specifically, was uh, Amy, Senator Amy uh, Kobachar, and I pray that I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Um, but Everyone pretty much is on board, but I think now the next step is for people to really articulate what reparations are, so people can so people can really understand and 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 really gauge how serious they would actually pursue a reparations proposal if they are elected into office. Terrell, there is never enough time to get into everything I want to ask you, I want to talk about with you. But I do want, um, as we wrap up, I want to tell uh, everyone to go to theroot.com, check out your interview with Cory Booker, because I think his responses may be surprising or eye-opening to a lot of people. I think the response I've seen from your interview has been that it was a different Cory Booker than maybe we've seen so far. It took time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you, know, you have to push it. You, once we directly asked him, uh, he got to the point. Well, it was, I, I think it was a good interview. Uh, so everyone go to theroot.com. Check that out. Terrell Germain Star, always happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today for more exclusive content. Join now at tyt.com slash join.